Welcome to the second video in this series on creating atmospheric night visuals in V-Ray for Rhino. In this video we're going to be adding some detail into our 3D model as per the kind of model we have on the left here as a guide. Now to do this we're going to begin by creating some of these timber beams that are running across the model and we're going to start by using the section to create this. This will be very similar to how we created these in the first video when we're just using that simple extrude tool but we're going to be adding a few features into this to look at how you might create repetitive elements within a larger scene like this. So we're going to just take the outline of those beams here, we're going to copy them and we're going to just move them across making sure that we're locking in that kind of horizontal axis, pressing the tab key again to lock that in and then just lining it up and snapping it to the first of those pieces. Then we're just going to take these two upright timbers and we're going to extrude them out using the extrude curve function and making sure we're in the timber layer there as well. And I'm just going to do it to be the width of this piece here, like so. So there we have the first of our timbers and I can actually delete that line once I've made it. What I'm then going to do is I'm just going to copy these because there are two next to each other like this. So we're just going to use that copy tool, taking a point on this first reference here and just moving it to the same point on the second one so these line up and match over there so you see i'm always using the elevation here to allow me to kind of line up the next piece now these two beams we have in the center and we're just going to isolate these pieces just by using our isolate tool up here so we can focus in on them these two pieces want to sit in between my two beams in this little gap here so what we'll do is we'll use the move tool again Make sure we're locking it in horizontally and then we'll just snap it to be on the inside face of that. Then we'll use the extrude tool to extrude it out in between those two pieces. And there we have our kind of timber beam sitting in between there. So that's one of my timber trusses. Now I'm actually going to then repeat these across the whole model. Now we've made this, we can unisolate the elements in the scene just by going back to that isolation tab and right clicking. And before I start copying this across my model, what I'm actually going to do is create and make this timber truss into what's called a block. We can do this just by typing in block into our command line here. It will ask us for the base point and I'm just going to be choosing the usually the bottom right hand point is the best one for this. But any kind of corner or place that you'll kind of insert the object into is always useful. So for ours, we're just going to choose this bottom right hand corner and then we're going to give it, give it a name and we'll call this timber truss. And it's good to put a number on the end of these in case you have lots of different ones because all your blocks need to have unique names so it's always good to end it with a number like so and that now is a block and it won't look any different but if you select it it will be kind of grouped together and at the top it will say one block instance added to selection. Now the reason we've made this into a block is something we're going to go through in a few steps time but first we're just going to copy this now along matching up with our kind of elevation over here. To do that we could easily just use the copy tool, pick a point on our elevation and just snap it to the next and just copy them across but there's a quicker way we can do this using the array tool here. So if we type in array we're going to use just the general array command it asks us for the number in the x direction. Now I happen to know there are 15 of these trusses going along and they're actually that is the x direction which is marked by this red line on our grid below. So we know it's going to be 15 in the x direction. I don't have any in the y because we're not having any going up that way so we'll just have one in the y and one in the z. Then it asks for the spacing or reference point of this and we're just going to choose a corner of the first one and the next spacing is the corner of the next and that's essentially asking for the spacing between each of the points in the array so that corner to that corner once we've got it you'll see it gives us a little preview of that array and i'll hit enter to drop that in and there we have our arrayed pieces across our object like so so now we've got these arrayed across i'm going to go into a bit more detail of why we made this into a block the reason blocks are really useful is essentially it creates identical copies of an object across your scene. Now for instance if we then wanted to change the height of one of these, so maybe you want to change this to make it a little bit higher, but across each one, if these weren't a block we'd have to do that individually to each of these beams. But because they're blocks, what I can do is I can select this one, type in block, 
again and we'll go to the block edit this time and then what we're going to do is let's just use the extrude command we're going to use the extrude surface we'll just select the top piece of these two hit enter and we'll just make them a little bit bigger like so it's a little bit bent there but that would be fine for this example hit ok and you'll see now they all have that extra piece on the top so it's a really quick and easy way just to adjust certain components in your scene and if ever you've got a repeated component across your scene it's always good to make it into a block to allow you to do that now one thing we do have now we've made this block is actually I've got this beam kind of intersecting from my window here and I want to actually change this one to not match the rest same with this one here to do that we actually then have to take it out from being a block in order to change it and to do that you can just type in explode in here or you can find it in your tabs down on the left hand side there if you hit explode it will release it from that block and break it back into its component parts and we can then delete the ones we don't need like so so there we have our kind of truss but I'll change truss where we've got that gap in our scene so that's our timber trusses that go all the way along and that was relatively simple to do the next part we're going to do is some of the detailing on our facade now if we isolate one of these elevations like so and have a look at it from front on you see we've got this kind of pattern going on the facade here well we've got some sort of patterning on here and we've also got these sort of circular windows that are going to be cut out of the facade and I want to apply that to my facade and my model so if we unisolate this again bring it back you can kind of see that over in this model over here which is a completed version of this well we've got these kind of indents in there and these circular cutouts now in order to kind of cut these out we can't just use the extrude tool on this and cut it out of the facade because they're actually at different angles you'll see the facade is actually kind of at a slightly angled slope and this is flat on so in order to kind of get these pieces so they're at the same angle of the facade we're going to be using a tool called the project curves tool which can be found over here and it's going to allow us to project these onto a sloping face or any shaped face in this instance it's sloping um, of geometry and this is really useful if you've got a kind of curvy surface and you want to project flat lines to get the pattern of those on a kind of twisted or curved or banked surface so in order to use it we're going to select the project curves tool we're going to select the curves we want to project which are these orange ones for now and we're going to just do all of these along here like so in the direction where it says direction here by default it wants to project them down and that's what that c plane z equals that means the kind of the bottom facing plane the downwards projection now i want to project mine across so it goes along actually the y axis which is this kind of green axis we can see here it goes this way so in order to change that we can just click the direction and i'm going to set it to custom there now if we hit enter it will ask us to sort of select the face first that we want to project on which are these two red ones here if you accidentally project another one you can just deselect it by holding control and selecting that and once you've selected those we're going to hit enter and then it will ask for the direction and for that we just need to draw a line in the direction we want this to be projected which is along this axis here so i'm just drawing a line along the y axis there and once you've done that you'll see it then projects those faces on to that surface now because it's a three-dimensional surface it always projects them on the back side as well so we're just going to go and delete the ones on this back face because we don't actually need these and just sort of zoom in quickly go through and delete those so now we've got those we can now use them to cut into that surface of our geometry and we're just going to use the extrude tool for that again so we're just going to select all of our curves here just by quickly kind of holding the shift key and going through and selecting all of these and then once we've got those we're going to use the extrude command and then extrude them in let's say by around 50 millimeters so sort of a 0.05 let's say meters in there like so and we can delete the lines once we've done that once we've extruded those in we can then just use our boolean difference tool again to subtract these blue shapes from our kind of big red walls here and this would give us a nice kind of indent of this geometry in this wall and I had the delete input off there but 
usually we could just delete it manually if that's the case as well like so so there we have our nicely kind of embedded or sort of inserted kind of slots into this face now I also have some on this back wall here and it's exactly the same process but I won't repeat it for this video just for case of time so we don't have to kind of repeat the same functions now for the next part I want to kind of cut these windows out of this facade and I'm actually doing that by kind of cutting these kind of sphere shapes or these spherical shapes out from our facade here to do this we want to actually model a sphere and then place it in the window as well and we're going to use the project tool in order to do that because I need to find the center point of these circles in order to create my sphere to be the right size to find the center point I'm literally just going to use a polyline to draw a little cross across these which gives me the center point you can also turn the center snap on and if these are kind of drawn correctly these circles you should be able to find the center using that center snap as well um, and then we can kind of draw our sphere out just using the sphere tool that's found here in the center of that once we have those if we then want to put them in the right place in here usually the best way is actually to project this x over again over to our geometry so select the object you want to project select the projection pick the surface and then draw the direction and there we go we have our x on our geometry there and that allows us to then move this to that point there and i'm going to put it on ghosted so i can see in the center of this and then move my sphere over and snap it to that x there like so let's put this back on shaded for now so once we've got that in position all we then need to do is just copy it across in the corresponding positions i'm just going to pick a point on my geometry like so and then just move it to that corresponding point on each of these so we there have our kind of spherical balls and once we've got those we're just going to subtract them again from the surface of this geometry so we're going to select the boolean difference tool select our geometry select these spheres like so and subtract them so and we can delete them once we're done with them now you'll find here that I've also actually got these beams coinciding in this piece and a bit of floor plate as well and this is a point where you might be kind of designing as you're going through your modeling you might want to make certain design tweaks to the objects as you're modeling them in this case I actually want to sort of remove these beams and this floor plate in here but I'm going to do it using a slightly bigger sphere so we can kind of actually not see them below there so I'm going to make a slightly bigger sphere there let's just copy this one across again and then we're going to subtract that from our geometry like so so we need to just use the boolean difference tool we'll select that floor plate and we'll select some of our beams now you'll see here this is interesting that because we've made these into a block we can't use that boolean function on them so if you did want to kind of edit any of your beams afterwards and this is another kind of instance where we've got certain beams that we want to be unique from the rest of them so we're going to have to explode those out to be a sort of separate piece from the rest of the blocks there and we'll just select those key ones we'll explode these and that way we can then select those and our floor plate here use the boolean difference tool and then subtract our spheres from them like so and there you can see we've now got these nice kind of cutouts directly from our facade and we can delete our sort of x here which was giving us that key kind of marker point there now as a kind of final piece on this I actually want to chop these right through to give little windows in this wall here to do that I'm actually just going to use this sphere I've got here we're going to scale it down using the scale tool just making it a little bit smaller Oops. make sure when you're scaling these you're just scaling it from that center point inwards then we can extrude it we're just going to extrude it all the way across directly through that geometry like so and we're going to copy this across as well into its kind of correct position 
So you see we're always kind of going back to that elevation to give us a reference and then we can kind of subtract it from this face like so. And there we have those holes cut out. So suddenly we've started to just add in a little bit of detail to this model doing these sort of in-depth cuts using that projection tool and we're still using the same tools that we started with just the extrude tool the boolean tools but very quickly you can see we can add a lot of detail to this model just using these particular tools as a final thing I'm going to do to this we're just going to take our kind of surfaces here and we're going to move them onto a kind of grass bank layer and I think to finish this we're going to just hide off the line work we've got here we can now delete this model because we've got our kind of new one that's been built. Um, I've actually got this wall here which I want to actually slightly extend. I think it's a little bit lower than it should be. So let's just extrude this as well upwards. Let's make my surface, pull it up. just use the right so I've actually got this little piece at the end here which I also want to correct you can see on my back drawing here it's slightly higher than I have in the model so let's just extrude this up just using the extrude surface tool select the surface like so let's pull it up put it on the right layer and also with this glass piece we'll do the same make sure it's on glass just to sort of finish off this bit of the model like so and then we can hide the line work so there we have our kind of complete 3d model and as a last touch in this video we're just going to create a sort of grassy bank for this to sit on now i haven't actually drawn one and we're not kind of we don't have a real site that this building is placed on but if you're sort of sighted somewhere you might have topography lines that you know of or context that you're trying to fit it in with for this i'm just going to kind of draw my topography lines out sort of by eye and we're going to use the kind of curve point here just to sort of give us some rough topography to work with. I'm just going to draw sort of a few points that's going to make it a little bit more interesting around the piece like so. Then we can go back to our perspective view and we're just going to move these slightly kind of down in relation to one another to give us a little bit of a kind of slope like so there we don't want to make it too dramatic let's just i just want it to be a very sort of subtle gradient once we've got that we can just select our topography lines and we can use the patch tool which you can just get just by typing the words patch we're going to keep the u and v spans as 40 by 40. the higher that number the kind of more detailed your sort of hill or your terrain will be when you make it We'll hit OK and there you can see it sort of patches it over that surface and then let's just move it sort of into a nice position like so so our kind of pieces here are buried in the ground and I think I'll put this on the same layer as my kind of grass bank layer like so so you can see it's sort of peeling out of the ground and once we've got that we can delete those terrain lines as well like so so there we have our kind of completed 3D model sat on this little kind of grass bank here and in the next video we're going to go through how we can begin to start lighting up this scene to start to kind of convey this atmospheric evening render that we're looking to create. So thank you for watching and see you in the next video.